Welcome to another NathanDumont.com video blog. So it's just been the Christmas holiday and I've been thinking about what to do with my beagle bone. Um, I had some ideas about controlling servos and things directly with it. It's got some PWM hardware but there's no drivers yet. And cycle counting and, and the other tricks you can do to do kind of software PWM with the Arduino and things uh, really don't work with a full Linux kernel and operating system unless you've got a real-time kernel and real-time modules, but I haven't got time to do all that. So I was thinking I could control some kind of household automation stuff, or I found this, Big Track Junior, uh, kind of programmable little robot that crawls around the floor, um, leftover Christmas present from last year, and I thought, well, that kind of fits on there. Uh, we could make this into a web-controlled uh, robot using the beagle bone. So first thing to do is take this apart. So this is the inside of the uh, Big Track Junior. I've uh, removed the keypad, which is uh, plugged in with this nice standard 0.1 inch pitch connector. So we've got the keypad connectors there. Looks like the um, the main chip that controls the whole thing is is uh, just. Um, an epoxy covered lump on that board there and there's some transistors for the motor drives the gearboxes the little speaker at the front there the laser at the front blue LED uh, and this is the accessory port which looks like it's just power um, when it activates fairly simple it's nice that it's got this 0.1 inch pitch header, so I think the next thing to do is um, put the batteries back in it and see what signals, presumably it's scanning. So the way these uh, keypads work is you've got rows and columns effectively, so it'll be one side is rows and one side is columns, and so it will scan down that way and look at what the which buttons are pressed on that row so it'll look at this row and then look across and so you only need the square root of the number of uh, connections then we should be able to emulate this with some uh, transistors and GPIO and connect it into that pin header to control the whole thing from the beagle bone Right, it's been quite a while since that first bit of video that I did with the big track. Um, lots of things have changed and it should be working now. So here it is. Lots of boards on top of it. So the first thing to say is the, the plan about emulating the keypad didn't work out at all. Um, I scoped it out for a while and it turns out it's really complicated, the, 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 the key scan and actually emulating it would have been a pain, really difficult job to do. Um, so I've replaced the electronics inside, I'll show you in a, later, uh, with a, an H-bridge driver, dual motor driver, um, and some, some little sensor circuits, uh, and all that plugs into this um, chip kit UNO 32. Uh, basic Arduino compatible board, it's running a basic Arduino sketch, nothing fancy or hardware specific in there, 
Um, the main reason I've used it is it's a 3.3 volt board which matches up with the beagle bone. Um, so there's no level translation like there would be with a 5 volt Arduino, you know. Um, the board at the front here is just a USB Wi-Fi antenna. I didn't have, you know, a, a shop bought dongle handy, so I took apart uh, an O2 joggler, which is an internet appliance, and it has a, a standard USB uh, USB A plug actually internally to connect the Wi-Fi. Uh, so that was an easy place to get one of those from. So the Beagle Bones connected up to the the, the chip kit for the control. Got extra batteries on the back here to run all the all the new hardware, uh, and when it starts up, this acts as a, a Wi-Fi access point. So it sets up a network called Big Track, which you can connect to with your phone or uh, netbook or tablet or whatever. Um, you browse to the IP address of the of the BeagleBone, and it will serve a web page which lets you type in logo code uh, for to control the, the big track. So, let's see how it all works. Okay, so uh, we've got the actual big track here. Um, so I've pointed out Wi-Fi card, uh, the Beagle Bones in here, chip kit. So these four wires here along the top are connecting down into the, the chip kit here to do the communications between the two boards. So that's just connecting into uh, the UART on the chip kit, which is standard pins uh, 0 and 1, digital 0 and 1, same as the Arduino. Um, both of them are running off uh, an internal 5 volt switch mode supply, which I built into the front there, which generates power from this 9 volt battery pack that I've added at the back here. Um, to power the uh, all the extra processing power. So the wheels here have got opto encoders on them, which uh, go into the interrupt inputs on the chip kit Uno. Um, so then it keeps track of how many steps each of the two wheels have done, um, and so it can count how far it's gone and how far around it's turned by counting how far each wheel has turned. Um, the speed control is done with PWM outputs and the direction and that's all on this bundle of wires which go off inside. So when we turn it on I've added a, a power switch on the back here um, to turn on the external and the internal batteries. So when we turn it on, you can see that the uh, vehicle bone lights here, showing disk activity, which is pretty much solid on at the moment as it's booting, and the heartbeat light, which is just flashing at the bottom. Okay, so uh, now it's booted. If we look around here. See the uh, the activity light on the access point flashing away. So that means it's serving up a a web page, uh, an access, a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if we uh, fire up the PC, we should be able to browse to its control page and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's broadcasting a, a signal. Here we can see good, good strong signal for Big Track. Um, we can see it's waiting for an IP. So there's a DHCP server, so we're connected. The Big Track itself has got an on board uh, get a fixed IP address so it'll always come up at this IP um, and here we go so this is the main page so you've got a list of the commands here on the right um, basic logo commands standard syntax um, and we'll just type them in so if we bang in a, a short program so forward to left 90 and then forward to again so we'll do a square Okay, and then uh, if we get ready, uh, just click run, it will submit it. So, we put the big track on the floor, let's run this code. Off it runs. You can see it's slowing down as it gets to the end. It's 
because I found that it uh, it missed. So you saw up there when it got to the end it slowed down that's because it was missing some steps when it was running the motors full speed uh, and while it was running it just said uh, running on the screen but once it's finished it's taken us back and this is the code ready to edit and run again. Okay so you've seen the big track actually working now. Um, next thing to do is take it apart show you how it works. So I've not actually modified any of the uh, original chassis at all. Um, the keypad here has been taken out and put aside uh, but there's no not had to drill any holes or anything. So we unplug the power from those two. This battery pack is just held on at the back here with the cable tie through the chassis. So the laser, laser at the front here is connected up just with a, a little Molex connector there so the, the beagle bone can activate that directly so the fire command in the logo language. So I mounted the boards uh, toast rack style like this because uh, the holes in them don't match up so you couldn't have stacked them like you can with a shield. Uh, on an Arduino or something like that. Um, so there, it's just lengths of M3 threaded rod and some plastic tube that I got from the the model shop. Uh, a plastic plate here, just cut out to be the same shape as the the keypad. Um, just out of a bit of model plastic, model making plastic again from the uh, the local model shop. And you notice that all the, the leads and stuff all come out, so you can take take that plate off. Uh, there's nothing soldered through it or anything. So this is the, the contents. So the the motors are pretty much unaltered. I've I replaced the wires on them so that I had longer lengths uh, without joins in them. Motors. Uh, the motor batteries are still in here, so they power the motors. Um, the battery pack at the back here only powers the microcontrollers and uh, the logic systems. So there's a new power switch up the top here, so it switches both the motor and the uh, main battery off. Uh, and the switch on the original um, underside switch is actually on the uh, big track control board here at the bottom so this that's that's gone with the circuit so this board is what I added um, so the these big chunky power components on this side of the switch mode power supply it's rated up to three amps actually it's taking about half an amp I measured with the meter um, but that's converting 9 volts to 5 volts with uh, pretty high efficiency because it's switch mode um, and it doesn't get hot there's no heat sink on there anyway, so it saves that these two circuits at the end here uh, are the, um, the optoencoder translators so they've just got uh, a transistor switch which switches a logic level signal up and down uh, which is connected back into the interrupt pins on the uh, on the chip kit and in there behind all the mass of wires is um, as an SN 
754410, which is L293D compliant um, uh, quad uh, half H or dual H bridge IC. I've put a couple of decoupling caps either side, uh, just little 0.1 mic ceramics uh, to smooth out the, the square waves. I've put the the motors on with these Molex connectors because they're uh, obviously you don't want your code working and then plug your motor in backwards and have it going in circles. Um, so you can see the opto encoders here are uh, look like a pair of LEDs basically, uh, one either side. So the the bundle of wires here we've got red and black which are power for the for the transmitter side and then the yellow is the signal from the photodiode over here. So all that couples back to these two boards on the top. So all the motor control signals go into here. The, uh, there's a busy line out of the chip kit which just says uh, stays high while it's running a command um, which the BeagleBone can watch so that it doesn't send too many commands. Um, serial port, the command is basically uh, two signed numbers so uh, 100, 200 would make the left wheel go 100 steps and the right wheel 200 steps or more usefully uh, say 100 minus 100 which would make it turn by 100 steps. And the conversion between steps and degrees and everything is done in the Python so it's dead easy to, to tweak um, what what that does. So the the software on the BeagleBone, um, I'm running host APD which is uh, creating the Wi-Fi access point. Um, there's uh, the BusyBox DHCP server which was already on there which has been reconfigured to provide an IP address when you connect to the Wi-Fi um, and then my own Python web server which serves up the uh, control page and deals with the, the post request. If you submit your form it goes to a, a run URL and uh, it handles the code that you've submitted in your form. Um, and then the interpreter again is written in Python uh, and there's a um, Python serial library I've compiled for the BeagleBone which which does the actual talking to the to the chip kit there. So that's the the big track project. Um, biggest problem I think with it is is battery life. So drawing half an amp from double A's continuously they don't last very long, especially not cheap. You know. Being Q branded ones like I've been using, um, so it needs batteries changing quite often. Um, it could probably do with some sort of brownout protection on it, so when when they get down too low, uh, they need you need to put up a warning. Sometimes I found when the Beagle Bone boots up, it finds the voltage is too low, and it puts RF kill, which is the um, Linux uh, software that like manages your Wi-Fi on off switch on your laptop or whatever um, and turns the Wi-Fi off to save power so it's finding that the battery voltage is too low and it's killing the Wi-Fi and then you don't get an access point you can't access it um, and you don't know this until you've plugged in a cable and looked at the console messages um, so uh, I was a bit disappointed to find that the on board power management IC which has some lithium ion charging capability can't actually power the board off lithium ion um, it's got no uh, up converter to generate the 5 volts needed to run USB peripherals and things from the um, from the lithium ion although it can charge it so I mean if you add an external one and then use that charger circuit you might find that you'd be uh, charging your lithium ion battery from your lithium ion battery which is a horrible loop that's just going to make everything go flat quicker. Um, it's been a bit tricky sometimes the software um, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of information about the Beagle Bone around yet. I mean it's fairly new. It's a lot better now than it was a month ago. Um, 
but some of the, the the angstrom distribution can be a bit unhelpful when you're trying to compile extras because it doesn't come with all the uh, all the kernel headers and things and they've tried to keep it small um, which in some ways is a good thing it's not too bad to download it I, I reflashed the image on the SD card once um, and it's not too much of a download um, but it would be handy to have the kernel headers um, and some of the other development libraries available. All in all though, it's, uh, it's quite a capable little platform. Um, having Python and, and high level languages on there is really helpful. I'm not sure whether this um, bone script, JavaScript thing is going to take off. It certainly has. I can see it could be useful for some things if you've got a lot of LEDs to turn on and off. It's got 66 GPIO and Bone Script will run standard Arduino style digital write. Um, so you could do some quite clever stuff with that, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's a good board for the price. Um, the the serial ports and things are, are handy. It takes a bit of tinkering around to get them working, but fairly straightforward and 3.3 volt logic is fairly standard these days so um, if you need a lot of processing power and some fairly slow GPIO the Beagle Bone is definitely something to look at. If you want real-time IO processing and things go for a, um, a chipkit Max or a Arduino Mega or something like that because you're going to need lower level without the operating system running on top of it. But uh, if you want to combine them together like this, you can get a very powerful setup.